celebration that he's worthy of. There we go. Yeah. Oh, so good to see you. Happy New Year. Hoping and believing and praying it's going to be the best year yet for you. And I know that sounds a little bit cliche-ish, but when you're in God, you should always believe for bigger and better because we serve a big God who wants to do better things in our life and for our lives. So I hope your new year started off a we're week in and hope it started off as, as good as mine, but not as bad as a guy that I just heard about from my brother this morning. He went through a tough time at the end of last year and got through it and went out and brand new year, went and bought a brand new sports car. And he was just drag stripping that thing all the way out 1431 out towards Lampasas and pedal the metal, flooring it, high speed, all of a sudden state trooper lights him up, pulls up behind him. He doesn't pull over for like five minutes, just kept the police officer just tailing him. He finally decides to pull over and the police officer is pretty frustrated as he should be. And he gets out and comes up and says, what are you thinking? Why in the world are you going so fast? You're going 55 miles an hour over the speed limit. He said, well, I was just went through a tough time and just bought this car and just trying to kind of shake it all off as I go into the new year and have a little bit of fun. He goes, well, that's not good enough. You know, I could take you to jail right now, so you're going to give me one excuse I've never heard in my entire life. You got one chance. Tell me one thing I've never heard. Or you're going to jail. And he said, well, officer, to be honest with you, the tough time last year is my wife left me for a state trooper. And I thought you were trying to bring her back to me. And <laughs> That's terrible, isn't it? My brother's a terrible human being. Come on, Jimmy. That's not my joke. That's his. So don't get mad at me. If, I'm just repeating what I heard. Having a little bit of fun. Let's shift gears. If you got your Bible with you, you got a smart device you're looking at the Bible on. If you got nothing at all, you can use your hand this week. I encourage you to bring something next week. Let's always be lifelong learners. But if you got nothing, we got it on the screen. So whatever you have, Bible, smart device hand, let's lift it up towards, towards heaven. Let's make this declaration together. Say, Father God, thank you for your word. Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Your word changes me from the inside out. I am ready to receive, willing to obey your holy word. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to jump right into it. Every tail end of each year, I take some time of prayer and fasting and just asking God, what is it that he is going to speak over our house, over our family, for the coming year that we can stand in faith for, that we can believe for, that we can apply ourselves to? And this year, he spoke a very clear and definitive word that it will be, it will be, not maybe, not might, not sort of. For those that believe it, those that receive it, those that apply it, it will be the year of breakthrough. Doesn't matter how massive the mountain looks, doesn't matter how low the valley is. He is the God that levels the mountains and raises the valleys. He is the one that makes a way where there is no way. We're going to talk about it here in just a little bit, but he is the God of breakthrough. And he wants to break you through no matter what the circumstances look like, no matter how high or long the obstacles appear to be, he is on your side and he wants to show that to you. So I want to talk about how then. How do we position ourselves? How do we posture our hearts to make sure that we are going to walk out the word of the Lord for 2024? And I'm going to tell you there's no other better way than through the power of prayer and fasting. It's a powerful couple when joined together. Each one on its own is powerful, but you bring them together and it's unbelievable. In Joel chapter 1, verse 14, the Word of God says, announce a time of fasting. So family, I'm here today to announce a time of fasting. Today, we start our 21 days of prayer and fasting. We do it every year. It leads us and ends with the last Sunday of January, which is the church's anniversary. And I want to encourage you this. If you could partake even from today, partake from today. And I'm going to teach you a little bit, and i got a resource on there in the fasting and prayer part of the app and on the website. There's an exhaustive document that teaches more deeply what I'm doing today. I put something together to help you. It shows you all the different kinds of fast. The word fasting means 
to abstain from. So the holy rollers will tell you that you're not really fasting unless you're fasting food. But the Bible will tell you there's many things to fast beyond food. That sometimes it's not food. Sometimes it is. Maybe this year you're going to have a dry January. Get rid of some toxins out of the body. Maybe it's fasting certain foods. Maybe it's going to be a time thing. You're going to shut down binge watching something on Netflix and take that time to connect with God and prayer with God. And when you look at that teaching that I put on there, there's a one-day fast, three-day fast, five-day fast, seven, 14, 21, 40. All of them have different significance. And the 21-day fast, every time somebody fasted 21 days in the Bible, it was always for a breakthrough. They were believing something, needed an answer to it, and they needed to see God break them through in that moment. And so we're doing our 21 time of fasting and prayer. And it says, call all the people together. Thank you for being here. You're awesome. For those who couldn't be here today, we'll see you next week. For a solemn meeting, bring the leaders of all the people of the land into where? Into the temple of the Lord your God. Why? So that we can cry out. What is that? Prayer. To him there. So, Every morning from 6.30 to 7.30, Monday through Friday, we're going to have a time of prayer right here in the house of God, believing and standing in faith for each and every need that is presented over our church and for the global corporate needs of our church. We're going to be believing for that. And then on Saturdays, we're going to do it at 9 a.m. And then on Sundays, it happens right before service. You're welcome to come in at any time and just pray in the room. So we're going to be taking this incredibly serious as we always do. Now, you may not be able to participate at certain levels or, you know, whatever that looks like. That's between you and God. But my encouragement to you is partake of the big vision because it's not ours, it's God's. And it's for you. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you exactly why fasting and prayer are so powerful. Number one for today, what fasting does is it disconnects you from the cares of this life. And that's important because we can get too wrapped up in what somebody's opinion of us is on social media. We can get too wrapped up in materialism. We can get wrapped up in a lot of distractions and take our eyes off of God and what he has in store for our lives. In Luke chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, we see Jesus himself. He left the Jordan full, just baptized, now full of the Holy Spirit and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days. Why was he led into the wilderness for 40 days? Not to fast, but to be tempted by the devil. So Jesus was not led into the wilderness to fast and pray. He was led into the wilderness to be tempted so that he could get disconnected and make sure his heart was right because he was now leaving 30 years of carpentry and going into three and a half years of vocational ministry. So he wanted to, how you leave is how you enter. He wanted to start it off straight, start it off right, and he knew that he had to make sure that his heart was right before God. So he was led out there to be tempted but how did he deal with the temptation? That's where prayer and fasting came in. He ate nothing during those days. Now, if you've never done a fast before, I'm going to tell you flat out, do not start with an all-food fast. Like, Don't go straight water only for 21 days if you've never done a fast before, unless the Holy Spirit is leading you to do it. Because when he's leading you to do it, there's an empowerment he'll give you. Like last year, both 21 days that we did, January and August, it was liquid only for me. And I worked and I preached through it all and I had more energy during that time than I had before the fast even started. How is that possible? The Holy Spirit empowered me because he's the one that led me to do it. So you gotta be led into doing something like that. So don't just try that at home just to see if you can do it, you know? You wanna make sure that you're led because look at the end result of Jesus' fast. When it was over, he was hungry. Like, he was famished. He's like, I need some food. My body is dying. So each fast, only thing I ask you to do is just ask God. 
And I promise you, God will answer. Something will be impressed upon your heart, whether it's a dry January, whether it's giving up something you're watching, whether it's a specific time you're going to dedicate, whether it's abstaining from certain foods, because not all fasting foods are all foods. Sometimes it's just certain foods. We'll talk about that a little bit as we go. Daniel had what we call today the Daniel fast, where he abstained from meats and sweets, basically some other things. But inside of all of that, it's a powerful tool. And then prayer, why do we pray? Well, prayer connects you to God. And if there is any kind of margin in our life, any kind, of, any kind of space between us and God, there's no way in the world to close it like there is with fasting and prayer. Because I'm letting go of the cares of this world, and at the same time, I'm connecting closer to God. God says, draw them nearer to me, and I will draw near to you. In Jeremiah 29, verse 12, you will call to me. God's counting on hearing from you. Is that beautiful? He's not telling you like a command, you will call to me. No, he's like, you will call to me and come and pray to me. That's important. When you're praying, make sure you're praying directly to God. Don't just be throwing words out there. That's religion. God is wanting to build a relationship with you and deepen the relationship he already has with you. So when you're praying and you're directing everything to him and you're showing him that he is your source that you're putting first in your life. Look what it says. He said, I will listen to you. Isn't that beautiful? God's making you a promise right there. He's not leaving it up for debate. You pray to me, I will listen to you. And we know the scripture teaches us that every single prayer that goes up before God remains at the throne of God until it's time to answer it, but it will be answered. Now, it may not be answered in your time, when you think it should be answered, but I can tell you from experience, I'm thankful that certain things didn't get answered when I asked for them until years later. Because I look back at it when the answer does come and I realize, man, if it would have got answered two years ago, a year ago, I wouldn't be the man that I am today. I wouldn't be better, I wouldn't be stronger, I wouldn't be a little bit tougher. I, it, it, I needed to learn some things, build some character, grow some endurance in my faith. I needed certain things to take place in my life through that time of waiting. And this is why Joel 2 verse 12 says, that is why the Lord says, turn to me now, while there is time. You see, I don't know when Jesus is going to return but I can promise you who he is. And when he does, he is coming back for his bride, which is the church. And when we look at the world today, people are wondering, is this the end? Are we living in the end times? I can promise you. I've studied, got a degree in the book of Revelation. It's my favorite book of the whole Bible. I think it's one of the most life-giving books in the entire Bible. It's not as scary as you think it would be. And the truth about it is, I know we're not living in the end times because I've read the whole Bible. And the end times are going to look far worse than what we're living right now. But there is not a single prophecy yet to be fulfilled that is holding Jesus back. All prophecies have been fulfilled. So the only, we're on borrowed time right now. And the only thing holding Jesus back is the grace of God. Because God wants to see more people saved. So thank God for his grace. So Jesus is going to return, and right now when we look at, well, where are we? Well, he prophesied in Matthew, and he said, they said, when will the end come? And he said, it'll look like this. There'll be wars, rumors of wars, famine, division. Men will become lover of themselves. He goes through this whole list. There'll be all this chaos, anarchy, lawlessness. The spirit of lawlessness will abound, is what one scripture says. He said, but that's not the end, nor is even the beginning of the end. That is just the birthing pains of the earth before the beginning of the end begins. So how long, I believe today, honestly, that we are living in the birthing pain times. Now, how long do they last? I don't got a clue. I hope you could tell I've never had a baby. But I've been in the room for my daughter's birth and all four grandchildren's birth. And I can tell you, all of them had a different timing than, each, than the other ones. Candace took almost 18 hours to come out. And one of her children took 18 seconds. It shot out like a cannon. Boom, hit the table, literally. <laughs> Doctor wasn't even in the room. True story. Doctor was not in the room. Aaron had to catch it by them. Bill, no, I'm just teasing. That's too far. 
So I don't know, and no one knows. Jesus doesn't even know. He says, no one knows but the Father. But the bottom line is, there is time. Now, tomorrow's been promised to no one. Is it tomorrow? I hope there is, but I don't know if there will be. And look what God is asking. God's not telling, bring me your sacrifice. Where is your obedience? Bring it all to me. Bring me all your treasure. No, he's not asking for any of that. You know what God wants? While there's time, give me all of your heart. It's beautiful. What a good God we serve. I'm not after your sacrifice. I want your heart. I want you. I want the real you. You see, we are made in the image of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we are body, soul, and spirit. And our spirit is our inner man, our inner person. It is the core of who we are. It's that gut check, that heart-wrenching moment. That's your spirit interacting with what is going on. And that's who you really are. And God is saying, I want the real you. Come with all your baggage. It's okay, my son paid for it. Come with all that burden. It's okay, I'm going to lift it from you. I want you. I want you to give me all of your heart. And he says, come with fasting and weeping and mourning. What does that mean? It means let's take it serious. Let's not play the Christianese game. Well, I go to church, I believe. That's awesome. Both of those things are important. But do you have an intimate relationship with your creator? Do you know him? Do you walk with him? Do you talk with him? And when you couple these two things together, that's where the real power comes. Look at number three of the why. Praying plus fasting equals breakthrough every single time. Every time you see in the Bible that people prayed and fasted at the same time, a breakthrough took place. God intervened. God showed up and did something that only God can do. Look at Ezra chapter 8, verse 23. So we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God, would take care of us. One scripture says, we fasted and prayed so that God would take care of our needs. And guess what, family? He heard their prayer, and he's gonna hear our prayer because he's a faithful God. Even when we're unfaithful, he's still faithful. You can't out-faithful God. He's gonna be there no matter what. He's gonna hear our prayer. So my encouragement to you, at any level you can, whether you do a one day, three day, five day, seven day, 14, to all 21, be a part of it in some way, some fashion. Take some time, set it apart, put prayer first in your life, and just give something up that matters to this life but really doesn't matter to you when it really comes down to it. And use that time or that treasure, whatever it is you're abstaining from, and just dedicate it to God. And I'm gonna tell you why. And this is the part of the scripture God spoke over 2024. Micah chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. He said, I will indeed gather all of you, Jacob. I will collect the remnant. Let me tell you what the remnant is. The remnant is the few that will remain faithful even in tough times. You're here during tough times. You're going through things in your life I have no idea about. The world right now seems like it's half on fire, but you're here. You're a part of that remnant. Now, some would say, well, he's just prophesying to Israel. And I would say, read your whole Bible. That when the Abraham covenant came into place, that covenant was not just for Israel. It was, this is what God said to Israel. He said, I will make your descendants more than all the stars you could even begin to count in the sky. I will make your descendants more than a sand you can count on the seashore. There's not been that many Israelites born since then. What God was speaking to him is, there will be one that is born through Israel. His name is Jesus. And through him, all people of all walks of life and all nationalities will be able to become the true children of the Most High God. And the scripture teaches us that any promise given to Israel is for each and every believer that believes in Jesus. So this is my promise. This is your promise. He said, I will bring them together like sheep in a pen. Now, well, kind of like this right here. Like a flock in the middle of its pasture. And then look what it says. It will be noisy with men. Now the new translations say people, and that's probably a little bit more accurate in the original Hebrew. But why did it emphasize men? Because God has created the man, listen to me now men, to be the spiritual leader of your home. 
How you go, the family goes. How the family goes, the church goes. How the church goes, the nation goes. How the nation goes, the world goes. It's not inverted. We don't follow the culture and customs of this life. We follow Jesus. And when men step up and be the leader, not perfect, not getting together, and surely doesn't mean that you're the, you're the, you do what I say, you will submit. Don't do that. That's not smart. And it's not biblical. Because God cares about men, women, children, all the same. He actually says that women are our co-equal partner in this gift of new life. But he's called the man to be the spiritual leader of the home. So how you decide to lead is how your family will follow. I love our church. Our church is just barely predominantly men. Very rare thing. And when it says it'll be noisy with men, what does that mean? That we'll be celebrating. We'll be excited about what God is doing. And I want to encourage you. Well, can we just have a little bit of fun right now? It's New Year's Day. Can we do this? Can we try something a little fun? Yeah, that's about five of you. That's all I needed. Two or three gathered together. Boom, he's there. All right, check this out. Here's all I want to do, a little exercise. Men, I want you to reach real deep down inside and grab yourself by your bootstraps. You thought I was going somewhere else. Shame on you. Listen, <laughs> grab yourself by your bootstraps. When I count to three, let the ladies know, I promise you, you can do this. Your lady will be like, what? Oh, things are going to be a little bit different when you get home today. Be like, what time's the kids going out for the night? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, listen, when I count to three, I'm going to get myself in trouble. When I count to three, I want you to give me your best war cry. Let's be noisy. Let's fulfill prophecy. Because the church, listen to me, the church is not supposed to be quiet. If you came to hope to watch paint dry on the wall, brother, my sister, let me just help you out. Go to Lowe's. Grab some paint, put it somewhere, and just sit there and watch. God called us to be excited, to be celebratory every time we got together. So let me hear you, men, on three. You ready? One, two, three. Ooh. Oh, that was good. Now, women, here's what's so special about women. Everything that was created became something created out of nothing except woman. The only creation made from something living. That's pretty special to God. So ladies, are you all ready? Let me hear your war cry on three. I know you got one and you just can pull yourself up by your purse strap. All right, you ready? <laughs> here, we go. here we go. One, two, three. All right. Now let's do it all together. Let's the people of God be noisy as God calls us to be the remnant to see a city give their life to Jesus. Everyone on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Woo! Come on. Somebody needs to headbutt me right now. Spit in my mouth. Slap me in the face. I feel like I'm about to go on the football field. <laughs> Got me all excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> but look what is the direct result of this. Watch us now. When we start acting like this, and I'm not saying you go home and do your war cry every day, but every now and then probably won't hurt nothing, right? Check this out. The one. The one. And the only one who can. Who breaks open the way will advance before them. You see, you don't have to do this alone. You don't have to go. You don't have to, have to fear failure or the fear of the unknown. You don't have to worry about any of that because when we come together like this, Jesus rises up before us, and he already goes in the advance team, and he breaks open the way. They will, the people of God, the remnant of God, they will break through the gate. What does that mean? The gates of hell will not prevail against his church. What is that gate for you? That gate may be addiction. That gate may be a broken marriage or children that are acting like baby kids or rugrats or maybe the, pro the prodigal children that, that have gone and strayed away from the way. Listen to what I'm telling you. It may be finances. Doesn't matter what the gate is. You will break through. Why? Because Jesus has gone before you and made a way where there is no way. Their king, Jesus, will pass before them. You know what he's doing? Like a general, he's walking back and forth among his people and looking you in your eyes and saying, I got you. Don't worry about what the devil says. Don't worry about the naysayers say. Don't worry what the future looks like. I'm here. I'm up before you. And look at this. I will, the Lord says, be your leader. 
Isn't that good? So breakthrough is coming. Whether it's in your health and your face is sickness that doctors say there is no cure for. We've just saw literally over two dozen people cured completely of cancer, not by medicine, but healed by the power of God in 2023. Had a couple that we prayed with out in the lobby. Doctors told them the baby's brain was filled with fluid. Started to talk to them about terminating the pregnancy. We stand in the lobby and pray. They get the test done. Two weeks later, the test results come back. No more water on the brain. Baby's 100% fine. This is the God that we serve. Whether it's a breakthrough you need in your marriage, maybe you're just at each other's throats day in and day out, then Jesus is going to lead the way. If it's a breakthrough in your finances, Jesus, let him lead the way. Put God first in every part of your life. Are you hearing me now? Oh, I wish my wife was here. She, she's on the road right now, our, our dog. We got a 125-pound hunting dog. Looks like a killer. He is, but he's, for us, he's cuddly. A little humble brag, he just won nationals at AKC three weeks ago, but she's got him on the road right now. And he, she just texted me before that he won again today. I'm like, that's what we do in the Kilke house. You know what I'm saying? Right, anyway. But my wife and I were talking just this morning. She was like, babe, like, I know I got to do this, but I really wish I, wa- I want to be there. And then afterwards, she watched the first two services. She came back and she was like, I was war crying with y'all in the dog arena. I was like, I love that, baby. Just keep doing that everywhere you go. No man will ever want to mess with you. Just keep, keep that up. That's why I got you that dog, taught you that war cry. There we go. But family, hear this and hear this clearly. You decide to be a part of this. You decide to take this serious. You believe and receive the word of the Lord that this will be the year of breakthrough your life. I'm telling you, it will be. Just like last year was the year of supernatural, and we saw hundreds and hundreds of supernatural miracles and healings take place in our family. I'm believing this year the testimonies are going to continue to pour in exactly what God has spoken is his yes and amen over our house. Amen. Can we give God one big thank you for his word today?